for today's installment of Mixture Rich. Not aviation, not home automation, not home audio, but my car, my Tesla Model 3 2020. I'm going to install a power lift gate from Handshow. There's a whole ton of videos on how to do this. I'm not gonna go through every step. What I wanna highlight are the improvements in terms of the installation that I'm going to find today. I've watched many videos on the installation here, and I'm gonna just highlight certain components uh, of the install, which I think I can simplify or make your life easier when you go through the install. While I've said that this won't be a complete tutorial, I will, however, at the very end of this video, do a quick overview of just where everything is installed. The bumper's removed. I haven't removed it completely by removing the clips at the bottom. It's not necessary. As long as you've got the clips from the top and the bolts from the top and just let it hang, you've got enough room to work and pass your cabling. I removed enough of the trim pieces here to be able to get access into this back corner. I've already removed the trim piece up here. And I will tell you right now, uh, it has been mentioned in a few videos, but I will mention it strongly. There are some blue clips and some white clips. The white clips go here and here and here and here. You will get extra clips in your hand show kit, but you won't get any extra of the white clips. And I'm gonna tell you now when removing them, you are likely to break them. So I'm going to find out later on if whether the replacement blue clips will also fit in that position and problem solved, or I'll have to order some new white clips. Okay, so I've got my struts installed on both sides of the car, and now it's time to pass this wiring down, which comes down the side here, down through the bumper, and then through a hole and into a grommet. In every video I've seen, uh, people are using wire pullers like this. I don't know why that's necessary, because if you take the time to take the bumper off, which is going to simplify your life tremendously, you can just hand pass that wire through that hole, and I'll show you how easy that is. So I'm on the left side of the vehicle, and in every instruction video you're going to see, uh, you have to pull out this blue grommet, like so. And I've already done it, but you can probably see here that I've cut it open so that I'll be able to pass the wires through afterwards. But next thing is to get the wire through. And as mentioned, you don't need a wire puller. You can just reach your hand underneath here, quite easily, in fact, with the bumper off. And there we go. This wire is split into two pieces. Here we go. And I've got the wire through. It's really that simple. And it'll be exactly the same thing on the right side. Okay, the next little trick is you're gonna to need to push these wires through those grommets that we pulled. The one on the left-hand side is a small circle. The one on the right-hand side is a bigger oval, which means cutting it and getting the wires through will be a lot easier. So I recommend, especially with a smaller one, multiple cuts. As you can see, I've done a cross and then again. So it's opening up in three different directions and that will make it a lot easier to push it through. Next recommendation, there's a bigger connector out of these two that you need to push through. Start with the bigger one, push it through, and that will be easier afterwards to push the smaller one through. This is the bigger one coming through. This is the smaller one now coming through. As you can see, I managed to get those through fairly easily, and I'll slide it down the rest of the uh, black outer sheathing back to the grommet hole uh, where it will plug it up for weatherproofing. As I mentioned earlier, the one on the right-hand side is a lot bigger, so it'll be a lot easier to do. To make my life a little bit easier to move this grommet down this weather stripping out here, it's actually rather um, rubbery, and uh, once you've passed it through the bumper, it gets a little dirty, so it makes it hard for this to slide down. So, a little bit of glass cleaner. Anything will do, because it's gonna evaporate afterwards. I'm gonna spray it on the line here, and Simple, all the way down, and life is easy. As you can see, the grommet went back in rather easily and the wire is well protected by the rubber that surrounds it. All right, so the next thing I wanna tackle, uh, and as you've probably seen in all the other videos, is getting the wire loom that goes to the handle and also to the actuator button for the, uh, the tailgate itself. A few wires need to go through here, and it's quite difficult to do. So people use a fiche like this to do so, but they struggle with it. The other thing that people struggle with is getting these zip tie connectors released as well so that you don't damage them. So I've already 
removed one. It's quite simple. Taking one of these types of picks here, I just get in here and open up the tooth on the zip tie and you'll see that this slides right out. That simple. Now I haven't destroyed this and I can reuse it again. Once I'm ready to connect, I'm just gonna push it right back in there and the teeth are gonna engage. So these have been preserved. Now, the next thing I'm gonna to try to make my life easier is I got some foam wire pulling lubricant. I got this on Amazon or at Home Depot, I don't remember, but it is quite easy to find. I'm gonna spray some of this in through the loom here and with the wire fish, it should make things a lot easier to pull the wires through. There are two sets of wires that have to go through this loom. One of them is the uh, controller wire. In this particular case, uh, V4 and above, it says fish wire male. And then the other one is the tailgate button. The reason they're separated is because you do have the choice of putting the tailgate button elsewhere, as in not in the tailgate itself, but actually on the side of the vehicle as well. I will choose to put it in the tailgate. It is the safest place to put it, but that does mean I have to run both of these through. Now, with both of these plastic connectors, that's gonna get tricky. So the one labeled fish wire, I don't see an easy way to pull the wires out with the pins. I'm gonna have a more careful look at that in a moment. But on the tailgate button, it does look a lot easier. So there's this little yellow tab, which you can pull back. It was inside here. I used a pick to release it through here and then pull it back as such. And then in here, try to get some focus here. There's a couple of little white tabs here that hold the metal pins in. You just pry them up carefully like that and you can pull back on the pins. Very important to note the order. So take a picture of your connector in both directions like this. So in my case, when I'm looking at it from this side, the yellow side, it's going green, red, black from right to left. And of course the reverse on the back side. but do take a picture so that you can push these back in afterwards. Now I've loosened the black pin and you can see it comes out quite easy. So I've managed to pull this connector off. Uh, it's fairly simple to do. Like I said, pull that little yellow tab and then lift the little teeth and then pull it out. I don't think I can do it with this one. I've looked, had a good look at it and it looks like it's been well sealed in. But with this now off and these two combined, I can tape them up and with the wire fiche and the foam lubricant, um, I should be able to pull this through fairly easily. Let's find out. that particularly easy to get the uh, the fish through that slides really easy with that foam lubricant now that I got that fish through coming out over here I did have to pop it back through the hole here and then of course get to the underside of the deck here there's a there's a big oval hole here and push it through over there and now we're inside the car so this is sliding really easy Let's get some wires attached to this. I'll probably put a little bit more foam lubricant in here and pull these through and see how, how well we do. Let's have a look down at the bottom. Yep, I can see it coming out there. So that means there is good coverage down in there. Let's give this a try. All right, so my wire is now guiding through here and just about to enter into the bottom portion of the boot here. I did pull through some, some wire from in here just to make my life a little bit easier to guide it this way, okay? So rather than try to pull against all of this friction and metal in here, and of course that's gonna, that's gonna fray this outer jacket, just by having a little extra through here is definitely very helpful. Now, I've already made it through to the entry point here. I've manipulated the boot, and, and now it really turns out that releasing these is a great idea because this leaves it very loose. And if you can place this in behind the trunk edge like this, it gives it a much more a sweeping curve rather than all of these twists and turns, which make it much more difficult. Now, I've got some uh, spray foam lubricant still in there. It should be able to pull through okay. Um, so, let's see how I'm doing. Look at that. I'll remove all of this tape and clean myself up. I'm pretty slippery. And we should be able to pull it through and replace everything back into position. 
Later on during this install, there will be a CAN bus adapter plug which will connect in the center console underneath here. That is in version four and above of the hand show kit. In several videos, it is recommended to pass this wire along underneath the seat and into there, but that's across the carpet. I'm going to see if I can find another way to do this, either by snaking it under the carpet or finding another way to hide it as best as possible so that it's not visible, also that it's not in reach of being damaged in any way to be seen. First of all, I've taken out some of these uh, plastic clips over there and over here so that I can move this carpet easily. And I'm going to give it a go and see if I can get something to snake under there and over to there. If you look carefully, you can see my fiche on one side of the carpet here and coming out over here. So by detaching the clips I mentioned earlier and over here, I'm able to lift up the carpet adequately like this, pass my fiche underneath, catch it on the other side, and now all I have to do is attach my wires and pull it through. The last thing that I have to install, which I could make just a little easier for you, is the kick sensor is going to install right here. On the other hand, there is also an access panel right here. And this can be removed from the underside and you can also install it that way if you choose not to remove the bumper. Now, the kick sensor is here, there's a backing plate and you get a couple of stainless steel screws. I've already done a test by drilling through here and trying to attach this, but because of these ridges here, there's a little bit of extra depth. So these screws are not gonna work to go all the way through. So I'm gonna need something longer. The other choice, of course, is I could have ground down these uh, plastic uh, strengthening grids in here. But I think that's a bad idea because that will take away some of the structural integrity from this plate. So I'm simply going to swap this out for other stainless steel screws. Very important that you get stainless steel or at least a zinc-coated screw so that they don't rust. And I'm instead of using um, the screw-in type uh, that's like a wood screw, I'm gonna use mechanical uh, screws with a washer and with a nut and attach it up through here and secure it back on the backside. Okay, so that's my kick sensor installed. Backing plate, two stainless steel screws coming through, a washer, a nut, tighten it up, it's nice and secure. This can now go back in place, attach it up to the cable, and uh, start tucking my wires away. Of course, if you don't have this plate because you have an older Model 3, you can still just do exactly the same procedure at the bottom of your bumper, which of course will be easier if your bumper is removed. As promised, I said I would give a general overview of where things go. This looks like a big spaghetti mess, but this was just the, the rough trial of plugging everything in just to make sure everything is working. I'll tuck everything away afterwards, obviously, but I just want to show some of the obvious things. One of the harnesses will connect to your lights on the left hand side and on the right hand side. The connectors that used to connect to it will not attach to those lights anymore. You will just secure them with a tie wrap and move them out of the way. The lights are now powered by this box. The power line and CAN bus wire snakes through here, through the back, Through the car on the inside down here i snake the wire that goes to the can bus signal underneath the carpet and into the console coming back over here the ground wire for this unit has been attached here right next to another grounding wire that is likely used for this amplifier the motorized lifts as we know the wire comes down through here now goes under the bumper through that grommet that shows up in here. Same thing on the right hand side, as well as the wire for the kick sensor. The latching mechanism is right here with the control box down at the bottom. It has a connector and that wire is also coming in and plugging into the box. Basically, it's almost impossible to plug wires into the wrong location. The only thing that's left for me to do is to clean all of this up and install the box in its permanent location, which will go back here. So in many installation videos, I've seen the control box attached to the bottom of that amplifier. That's the silver colored um, box that's uh, suspended there. And in many videos, or even in the instructions itself, they talk about using a uh, double-sided adhesive and attach it to the bottom. 
Now, I don't like this for a couple of reasons. One is because self-adhesives like that are not going to hold for a for long term, especially that that amplifier is giving off heat, and then, of course, there's uh, they c there can be cold coming from, from the outside of the vehicle because this is beyond the insulated portion, and eventually it's just going to fall down. It's going to rattle around. Ideally, it's to affix it in there. Now, if you notice, right where the nuts that hold the rear tail lamps, there is a little bracket, and it has a hole in it. I have the control box now attached to that little bracket. I went through my box of stuff and found a nice uh, stainless screw with a little um, black spacer and uh, a little metal plate uh, acting as a washer for that nut on the back just because the hole in that bracket is rather large and that way I don't have the screw that'll just uh, fall through it. Uh, this is nice and tightened up uh, from one side. On the back side, I just used a little box wrench to hold the nut in place while I tighten it up. Now this is nice and solid and not touching anything else. It's quite easy to plug in the connectors from underneath. And I organized it as such so that the power connectors are attached from the top side. And also because there is an SD slot on the top of this box for future firmware updates. And that leaves it quite accessible. So if you want to do a clean professional install, get your box securely attached, attach your wires, use generous amounts of tie wraps or zip ties, some people call it, and make sure that nothing is rattling around. Okay, so I have everything uh, wired up, all the harnesses accounted for. I haven't uh, put anything back together, as you can see uh, behind me, none of the trim pieces, the bumper or anything like that, but uh, it's time to give it uh, a test. success. So that completes my installation and everything went uh, rather well, I have to say. Um, all of my trim pieces and everything is back in place and everything tied off and uh, looks very professional as if it were always, always there. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I mentioned, the objective was not to give a complete tutorial, but to address some of the issues that I saw in other videos in terms of either difficulties with doing things or things that could be done better. I wanted to show you uh, some of that and hope that you can uh, benefit from this. Um, in the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, please uh, hit the like. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and uh, set off the little notification trigger as well. And uh, I do have other videos on home automation and uh, aviation and uh, clearly automobile stuff. So enjoy and uh, we'll see you next time.